If you look at the levels of violence, if you look at the levels of corruption, if you look at um, the, uh, the issue of um, related to the violence, the, the gang issue, which has been there for a number of years, which has expanded. You have broken families, and this is a point that is rarely made, which is families have emigrated from this part of the world to the United States, and often several members of the family arrive in the U.S. and others stay behind. You have a broken family. A broken family without one parent or both parents missing has an influence on how what people turn to. They're looking for other families. Again, we won't get into big discussion of why people join gangs. But a combination of those elements, and basically, um, with some exceptions, fairly weak institutions. And that is really a fundamental issue. Um, you see people going to the streets asking for stronger institutions, going on, um, you know, going on um, having manifestations because, uh, because of uh, corruption levels. And um, it's difficult. Now, the issue is whether economic migrants um, fit within our law, our immigration law currently. In other words, refugees are one thing, economic migrants are another. It's the same dilemma in Europe. And each country's laws are slightly different as to whether they can accept them or not. Europe negotiated, the EU negotiated an agreement with Turkey that took in many, many millions of Syrians. And basically, they looked to find a way to provide more funds for Turkey to be able to better take care of them in the hopes that eventually they would be going home when the civil strife, the war was over. Um, their models, some work better than, than others, for they too found that just trying to build a wall and letting the ships float at sea was not a solution, people drowning and dying and so forth. So um, it takes a combination of several tactics um, to try to, to reduce the flow. And um, there's, no, there's no one one solution.